So this week we're going to be discussing insects in Nature Matters Academy and I wanted to start by showing you guys our nature shelf and this is something that we do as a family and my son collects different natural objects outside. We put them on the nature shelf and display them. Eventually we will um, replace some as others come in. But one thing that we like to keep up here is my son's insect collection. And insect collections do a few things. First of all, um, it helps us learn taxonomy in that organisms are organized in a very specific manner in, in science. And then it also just helps us to better learn what the organisms are around us. So we may see something outside, we may look it up, we may learn its name one day and then forget it a week later. And this helps us to remember what those names are. Now I will tell you that the vast majority of these insects we collected either after they had died or while they were dying. We don't collect a whole lot of live organisms simply because they obviously need to go off and, and do their thing and we don't want to leave a huge imprint or impact on the natural world. But at the same time, um, and being biologists, it's important to collect specimens and study them. And so there have been some organisms that we have um, euthanized. And euthanized means to um, kill, essentially, in a very peaceful way. We basically make them go to sleep. And, um, and we really only collect them if there are a lot of organisms around. For example, we have a red-shouldered bug in here. And my son collected it at our local library when there were literally hundreds of them around mating. They, they do not have a population problem. Okay, so let's talk about insects. So what makes insects its own group, what differentiates it from other organisms is the fact that um, it is an invertebrate, it is an arthropod in that it has an exoskeleton, right? And then finally an insect is, has six legs, three body segments, and a pair of antennae. That's essentially what differentiates an insect from other things like spiders. There are multiple ways that you can catch insects. First, you can go outside and look on plants. Insects are mostly gonna be found on plants, so if you have a garden, go look at your flowers, go turn over leaves, look at the stems, and you're gonna find insects there. You can also take a net out, and if you're walking through kind of a grassy meadow or a pasture area, you can just kind of swish that net back and forth through the grass, and you'll catch a lot of insects that way. Or you can also um, make a trap, and my son and my husband made this trap last night actually so basically what they did is they got a small bucket and they filled it with water and put a rock on the inside and then they made it level with the ground put a couple rocks around and then put a board over obviously you can see this is an old piece of a bookshelf and they put it over like this. And the idea is that the insect walks along and they fall into the water, they swim until they find the rock, and then they perch on the rock. And then because the rock is in the center of the bowl, it, the, the insect can't get out. And you check it every day to make sure, because obviously you don't want to kill any, any insects or um, other critters that are in there. So check on it every day to see if you caught anything. And then if you did, you can study it. Uh, for an hour and then let it go. You can keep it overnight. Um, if you decide to keep it for longer, you must feed it and make sure it gets water. So it's really important that you know what it eats. If you don't, then you just need to let it go so it can live. This is another way that um, you could potentially catch lizards as well. And so, yeah, if, you, if you're intrigued and want to try it, give it a go and, and see what you can catch and um, send me a picture of it. I'd love to see it.